Ashley Green. And actually, before Ashley gets started, I just wanted to give you a little bit more background on this webinar and the PD partners who have been working with CalPro to facilitate a number of the webinars this year. Last year, CalPro sought nominations for PD partners as a way to provide extensive coverage at the COABE and CCAE National Adult Education Conference. And we identified 10 PD partners who would help us to ensure that we had extensive coverage at the conference. And as a part of that opportunity for them, they agreed to be responsible for disseminating the information that they learned and received from the conference. Any of their research policy and practices initiatives that they could share from the conference were identified and some of those have been turned into webinars so that we can share that information with the rest of the state of California through our webinars. Today, ASCII is going to be speaking on, again, preparing ABE and ASC students for the 21st century workforce. And her objectives for the session today include helping participants understand what the demands of the 21st century workforce are ensuring that there are successful workforce development programs by sharing structures and models, and then sharing some ideas and tips for California's adult basic education and adult secondary education programs so that we can more successfully prepare our students for the 21st century workforce. And this presentation will be followed by an opportunity for you to ask questions at the end and if, when you are finished with the session, you would like to receive a certificate of attendance, I will ask that you please email me, Sharice Moore, at cmoore at air.org to request a certificate. And at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Ashley, and she will get started with her presentation. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. My name is Ashley, and um, Let's wait for the presentation to come up. So we're going to be talking about ABE ASE students in the 21st century workforce. Um, I teach ABE in the morning. I teach high school diploma. I teach the concurrent students that attend our high school. I also teach ESL distance learning. So I teach a little bit of everything. But ABE is my main focus. So um, I, I want to mention also that at the end of the presentation, um, my slides will be available for you. So um, if that's something that you want, you can get them at the end of the presentation. So demands of the 21st century workforce. What is the 21st century workforce? Now at the conference, 21st century workforce was a complete buzzword. That's all we heard about was 21st century workforce. Um, what it means is that jobs and baby boomers are retiring, and these are the jobs that are going to be open. Um, there's also jobs that are opening due to changing technology, and jobs that require a certain skill level. And many of our students aren't prepared for this in ABA and ASE. So our labor force is becoming more and more diverse. Um, the US labor force is expected to increase to 166.9 million by 2018. That's an increase of 8.2%. Hispanics, blacks, and Asians will constitute an increasing share of the labor force. In 2018, Hispanics will be 17.6% of the labor force. Blacks 12.1% and Asians 5.6%. And as you notice, many of these groups make up our ABE ASC classroom. And many of these students come to us because they want a better job or they need a job and they know that they need to improve their skills if they want to make that happen. So I'd like you to take a minute and think about the demands of the 21st century workforce. What skills do you think they require? So you're going to be able to chat your answer into 
the chat box, which is right here. So take a minute and go ahead and type in. So demands of the 21st century workforce. What do you think the skills are? Yes, computer skills, technology, global understanding, very nice. Ability to communicate effectively with other people via computers, phone, etc. Good, we'll be talking about that. Knowledge of where to find information, good. Communications, global citizenship, understanding bias and differences, good. Understanding oneself in relation to the technology in the world community, good. Cultural diversity, very nice. Personal relations skills, good. Customer service. Building community. products for the 21st century. Okay, take a couple more seconds and write down your final thoughts. Independent learning, team learning, very good. How to find training for identified jobs, good, we'll be talking about that too. Lifelong learning, yes. Okay. So, some of the skills that were mentioned at um, the conference were possession of soft skills. So many of you mentioned um, relating with other people, things like that. Um, critical thinking skills, digital literacy, which many of you mentioned, and higher education and training, which many of you mentioned as well. So first, um, we're going to talk about soft skills. And soft skills are the most important skills that employers are looking for. 90% um, of skills that they want are soft skills, and only about 10% are those hard technical skills. So the soft skills are really, really important. And soft skills are how people relate to each other, and they're those interpersonal and communication skills. And I thank you. <laughs> um, so soft skills are interpersonal and communication skills. And uh, we call these skills transferable. Transferable means that um, we can use them in the classroom and maybe the students use them at home. But they also can use them in the workplace. And here's a list of them. And many of these skills we implement in the classroom, and we do every day, but the students aren't necessarily aware that they're using them. So what is important is naming the skills and letting them become aware that they're practicing these skills and that they're also going to be practicing these skills at work. 
So listening well and understanding instructions, something that we do in class every day, but something they're also going to have to do at work. Managing time, monitoring performance, read and comprehend work documents, interact with others. Lots of you talked about interacting with others. They need to be able to communicate, solve problems, and work with people that they might not necessarily choose to get along with. Um, teach job duties to others, work in a team. I know many of us use group work as part of our classroom strategies, so that's a perfect one right there. Solve problems, take initiative and responsibility, lead, plan, and delegate. So like I said, these are transferable. They're what we're doing in our classroom, what they're doing at home, but things that they're also going to be doing in the workplace. And like I said before, what's important is naming them and letting them know that they are working in groups and that's something that they're going to do on the job, that they're listening and understanding direction. That's something that they're also going to do on the job. So just making them aware that they're doing these things in the classroom. So we next have critical thinking skills. Now critical thinking skills are also a soft skill, but important to mention on its own, because students need to know how to be able to solve a variety of problems in the workforce. So what are critical thinking skills? Reasonable, reflective thinking focused on deciding what to believe or do. And it's thinking about thinking. And I actually went to a workshop on this, and it was completely about cr critical thinking skills and giving students scenarios and asking them how they would solve problems. And I thought it was really effective because there's so many situations at work where you're going to have a problem and you need to be able to figure out how to solve the problem without help. So it was really interesting. Like one thing that they mentioned, what if you finish your job? What if you finish what you're supposed to be doing? What are you supposed to do? Well, you need to be able to critical think and think about what you need to do next. So you're not just sitting there. And that's what jobs are looking for. They're looking for people that are motivated to do those kinds of things. So next we have digital literacy. Now, digital literacy we talked about, um, many of you mentioned before. and um, Many of us have heard this term, and at the conference it was talked about over and over. There was lots of mini conferences on digital literacy, on how to implement it into the classroom. And what it is is the ability to locate, organize, understand, evaluate, and analyze information using digital technology. Okay? So if you are in the classroom, I would like you to give me a thumbs up if you have computers in your classroom. So go to the person on the top with the hand raised, and if you have computers in your classroom, give me a thumbs up. Diane? Lynn? Luis? Welcome, Luis. Tom. Okay, nice. So lots of us do have computers in the room that we're able to use so that we can help students become digitally literate. Now, many of us and the students themselves think that they are digitally literate, but it's not always necessarily the case. So what can a digitally literate person do? So they're not someone that's just up with technology. Like someone that's digitally literate is not a person that can only use Facebook, MySpace, the internet, that kind of thing. Um, they might think that they're digitally literate because they can do these things, but it's not necessarily the case. Um, they need to be manipulators of data. So they need to be able to use programs like PowerPoint, Excel, and Word to manipulate data and use software and systems for the world of work. So these are all things that in the classroom we can be doing to help them 
become digitally literate. Um, using PowerPoint presentations, um, doing Excel worksheets, um, using Word to type essays and paragraphs are all helpful in creating a digitally literate person. Um, and just making them aware that just because that they can use Facebook and MySpace and search something on the internet, they're not necessarily digitally literate. They need to be able to use programs and software. And then higher education and training was the last one. Students need access, okay? Many students right now don't know the paths. They don't know how to get to the higher education and training. They don't know the options and they don't know what's available to them. And we're going to discuss this more in um, some of our model structures and programs. So why are all these skills important? Well, the workforce is changing rapidly. Many jobs that required numerous workers before are now computerized. So we no longer need as many workers, and this makes finding jobs difficult. So work gets done anytime, any place. And technology is changing all work. And work is becoming more complex. Information is accessible to everyone. Routine tasks are automated. And skills to accomplish traditional jobs have been upgraded. And service and knowledge transactions dominate. So someone mentioned before customer service. And customer service is one of our leading um, entry level jobs at the time. Um, customer service, um, the healthcare field, those are all things that students will be working in the service industry. But everything's changing, so our teaching needs to change, and we need to have our students become prepared for the 21st century workforce. So, so far, do you have any questions or comments? If you do, you can feel free to chat into the box here. I'll give you a minute or so to think. I'm always wondering how we can keep up with the rapidly changing technology. It's so fast. I think that's part of um, what someone mentioned before, being lifelong learners ourselves. We need to be up with the technology so that we can help our students be up with technology. I know it's hard, and we don't have much extra time, but I think it's part of our responsibility to be aware of what programs are out there. Yes, you will be able to download the PowerPoint at the end. One more person is typing. How do you integrate technology into your ABE class? Well, I use um, Word quite a bit and PowerPoint. Um, whenever I do writing projects and things like that, I um, have them end up making a final project on the computer. I only have 10 computers in my classroom, which makes it a little bit difficult, but um, we do the best we can. And my presentations and things like that, I do on PowerPoint and use the computer myself so they can see me using it as well. I would say the same for ESL. Um, you might have them do conversations or things like that on the computer, type them in Word or a PowerPoint on verbs or conjugations or whatever it may be. 
If anyone else has any other ideas, you can type them in as well. Okay. Anyone have any last comments? Okay. So now we're going to talk about model structures and programs. Now, at the conference, Cheryl Keenan um, was there from the U.S. Department of Education, and she was actually from the Department of Adult Education and Vocational Services. So she was very up to date and familiar with everything that's going on. And she emphasized model structures and programs that facilitate the implementation of 21st century workforce skills. So these models were basically all she talked about, how great they were and how all schools need to be using things like the models I'm going to talk about in a minute. Um, she also talked about funding, and we know funding is tight, but she said that there is funding out there available, but it's the programs like we're going to be talking about, ones that connect um, basic education to the workforce. So, um, you know, and making your program known so that, um, you know, the Department of Ed knows that such programs exist. So it's really about selling yourself, creating these programs and selling yourself. Oops, sorry. Okay, so we're going to talk about model structures. So one structure is transitions. And transitions provide a smooth transfer from ABE or ASE to the workforce or to higher education with the connection between the adult school and the workplace and or community college. So this actually takes a lot of work but is very effective. So this requires making partnerships with the community college or maybe a workplace that offers training and um, requires a lot of manpower but is really good for the students and really gets them into the community college and into the workplace. So transitions is one way. We also have pipelines. Now pipelines reach deep into low income neighborhoods and provide support as well as access to jobs. They provide childcare, transportation, and while students are attending the adult school. So students have the ability to attend school. They're also getting counseling, which provides also transportation, child care, whatever they need. And they get um, job training. So they get a little bit of both at the same time, which is really nice. There's also pathways. And pathways provide multiple access points. So a student can get a short career and come back later for a more advanced degree. So this is kind of like a community college. They might start at an adult school, do a transfer to the community college, and get a basic um, medical assistant degree. And then go work in the medical assistant field and later want to become an RN. So then they would go back to college and get their RN certificate. So pathways are just multiple access points so that students can come and go and complete different programs. And there's also bridges. And bridges provide employers and employees a means to find each other in the job hunt while students are attending adult school and or community college. So this is um, more of getting out there, getting yourself connected with employers, employees, and making those connections so that students have an easier time transitioning into the workforce. So some um, model programs that were talked about at the conference were IBEST and um, Transitional Jobs. And both of the websites are listed. And um, you'll be able to get those in the PowerPoint at the end if you'd like. So IBEST is Integrated Basic Education and Skills Training. 
and it is um, basic skills students get the benefit of support from basic skills instructors while earning credit towards the certificate or degree. So they're going to school in ABE or AIC and also receiving credit for their college certificate at the same time, which is nice. Um, how it works is the first step is a collaboration between the technical and the ABE ASC instructors. So part of the day they would be with an ABE instructor and part of the day they would be with the technical instructor. And the curriculum integrates the basic skills competencies and those with the technical program. So this usually means a 50% overlap in instructional time. This also means that both content and basic skills instructors must be present in the classroom for at least half of the total time of instruction. At other times, the content instructor or the basic skills instructor would be teaching solo. So it does take a lot of coordination, but this program has really worked. And Cheryl Keenan from the Department of Ed really praised this program and talked about it quite frequently at the conference and mentioned how great it was. So that is iBEST, and I encourage you to look at their website and find out more about the program if it's something that you're interested in. So the benefits of iBEST are they earn college credit while practicing their basic skills, and they have a better transition because they've already started. They've already started earning credits, and that gives them the motivation and the push to actually go to community college. So those are some of the benefits. So next is transitional jobs. And transitional jobs is an employment strategy that seeks to overcome employment barriers and transition people with labor market barriers into work using wage paid, short term employment that combines real work, skill development, and supportive services. So this is a different type of model. And how does it work? Well, transitional job program participants earn a paycheck. They learn skills and become eligible for the earned income tax credit and receive intensive mentoring and support. So this is the first step towards permanent employment and economic opportunity for many people who would otherwise not be working. So there's some benefits of the transitional jobs program. Uh, maximum choice, so matching job sites and participant skills with interest. Um, diversity and number of employer relationships, so you need community buy-in and support through employer engagement and relationship building. And this is the realist of real work experience participant working with people not in an employment program and immediate feedback from colleagues and peers. So this is really nice. They're able to work and get training at the same time while getting paid. So this is nice. So now we're going to talk about how California ABE ASC programs can successfully prepare ABE ASC students for the 21st century workforce. So some ideas and tips for um, your programs. So when programs are creating pacing guides and curriculum, it's important to look at the career clusters framework. Um, that was mentioned quite a bit at the conference. And the website for the career clusters is mentioned below. And also to create evidence of successful transitions. And this is what I was talking about before knowing about programs like iBEST and transitional jobs, you know, making them aware to the Department of Ed, that's how we get funding. And that's how we see how successful programs can work. And that's what's actually keeping our adult schools, you know, above ground and not closing down, even though a lot of us are closing. But to keep us open and keep us up with the 21st century, we need to be connecting to the workforce and creating partnerships with the community. And this is part, a couple of the models required creating those partnerships. 
um, adopting the core standards, and there's the website, and advocating for counseling in adult schools. I know this is really difficult, but Cheryl Keenan was the one that actually said that this is really important. We need to offer counseling for adult students because many of them need help with the path. They need to, um, you know, help deciding what they're going to do and how they're going to get there. And ultimately, this helps them reach their goals more effectively. So, some tips for the classroom. So, you can teach transferable skills. So, these are the skills we talked about at the beginning. They are um, skills that can be done at home or in the classroom that are also done in the workplace, like the soft skills and um, the digital skills. Those are skills that they can be using in multiple places. Um, they can also use contextualized materials. So an example could be a hand sign, hand washing sign to practice basic skills. So a hand washing sign in my class, I use to practice sequence. So what I would do is cut up the steps and allow them to sort the sequence. And that's practicing reading comprehension skills as well as a sign that they might see on the workforce in the job. And have students acknowledge skills they are using in the classroom that will be used in the workforce and make them aware of them. So that's what I was talking about before, having students aware that they're using these skills. And um, something that I do is have them make I statements. So Today, I worked in a group. That is a workforce skill. Um, today, I helped a student log on to the computer. That's a workforce skill. So every day before my students leave, I have them tell me one thing that they did using an I statement. And that helps them realize what skills that they're using. Uh, making use of technology. A lot of us are lucky enough to have computers in the classroom. Some of us are not. But hopefully there is some sort of lab or something like that available on campus that we can use so that um, students can actually have hands-on experience with technology. I know many of my students don't have computers at home, so being able to access them at school is really important, especially if we want to make them digitally literate. Um, some have access on their phones, but that's not going to be the same as using them in the classroom and I can use programs like Word, PowerPoint, and Excel. Also using group work. Uh, many of us already use group work in our classrooms, um, but making students aware that group work is a workforce skill, that they're going to be working in groups at work. So um, just making them aware of that and teaching students how to effectively solve problems. Um, we talked about critical thinking skills and problem solving skills. So this is something that's really, really important. So if you have any questions or anything you would like to add, please feel free to type into the chat box. Maybe you have something that you do to teach critical thinking or workforce skills, 21st century skills, anything you want to tell us. Or if you have any questions about Cheryl Keenan and what she was talking about, I'd be more than happy to share. While people are thinking and typing, um, one thing I also do in my classroom is I use classroom jobs. Um, I have a materials manager. I have a timekeeper. I have a new student trainer. And these are all jobs that students do in my classroom that not only save me a lot of time, but also give students the opportunity to practice workforce skills in my classroom. Also, a cell phone monitor. That one's very important. My students um, really get into that one. <laughs> so, 
And if you'd like to learn more about workforce skills, um, there is a full workshop on integrating and contextualizing workforce skills into the ABE ASC classroom, and it's available through CalPro. Okay, where do we get funding for the pipelines? Okay, so the pipelines, one way to get funding is to um, use the community college as a resource. So the, um, we can use the community college or businesses that are willing to help train employees. So it just really depends on um, what you want your outcome to be. But a pipeline in a low-income area, you might maybe have a factory or something where a company is looking for work, and that's where you can get the funding for that. And that's what they suggested at the conference. We have a technical team and a student council to develop new ideas and take concerns to administration. Good. So a student council would be really good. Um, and a tech team, that's very nice. It's nice to hear stuff from students, not always hearing them from the teachers and complaints and stuff like that. I find it challenging to help teachers in ABE ASC to integrate these skills into classrooms. Students are focusing on getting a diploma or building academic skills to move to GED or high school diploma. How can I motivate them to integrate these skills? What I would say is it's not something that they necessarily need to add to the curriculum. It's just something that needs to be integrated. And it's not any extra work. It's just identifying the skills that they're doing in the classroom that um, can be used in the workforce. So like sequence, for example, like I gave you before. I use sequence for reading comprehension. And for the reading comprehension, I also use the hand washing sign, which is a workforce sign. So it's just you know, making adjustments to what you already teach and integrating workforce skills. And Lynn, I highly suggest the um, teachers that you're speaking of um, look into that um, workforce skills, integrating and contextualizing workforce skills that Catherine's going to put, uh, let's see, an online course on this beginning tomorrow. So there'll be a link at the end of today's session. But it's a really good training and gives you lots of ideas on how to incorporate a um, workforce skills into the ABE and ASE classroom. And there's also one that's separate for ESL classes, which is excellent. So, and pipelines. Now, pipelines are for those low-income neighborhoods, and they provide support as well as access to jobs. So. Um, they offer child care and transportation and those kinds of things while students are attending school and also getting work training at the same time. So that's what the pipelines are. Sure. Any other questions or comments? Anyone doing in anything fantastic in the classroom? with workforce skills? And Ashley, as we are moving on to wrapping up the webinar for today, I will give everyone a few more minutes to type in any final comments there, and then we'll move on to our closing slides and closing announcements. OK. Any other comments, questions, concerns? I'm hearing feedback now. OK, so thank you for your time and participation. 
Oh, sorry, the feedback. Bad. But if you have any questions, here's my email address. You can contact me at any time. All right. Ashley, thank you very, very much for your leading us through learning about preparing our ABE and ASC students for the 21st century workforce. As Ashley shared at the beginning of the webinar, her PowerPoint is available for download, and if you look at the third pod down, you'll see her PowerPoint there. We offer the instructor forums as an opportunity for you to participate in a, a course, per se, an electronic format with other instructors so that you can share feedback and ideas, and we are having one more for you coming up in two weeks that will be on the 10 principles of servant leadership and it will focus on tools for teachers and students and really on how instructors can use the principles of servant leadership in the classroom and we are very fortunate to have Diane Silvers who will be doing that session for us. For today's session we do have at the top some announcements to remind you or reminders about this webinar. We would like to get your feedback and thoughts on it. And so at the very top, you'll see that we have a web surveyor online questionnaire to ask you to share comments and feedback on today's webinar. And again, if you would like your certificate, I see Barbara has put it directly there that you can actually email her instead of me to get the certificates for the course for today for your participation and that's bcrawford.air.org and then I also have another of our CalPRO colleagues on the line, Catherine Green, and as she was sharing during Ashley's presentation that we have other resources available to help support you to prepare your learners for the 21st century workforce and Catherine has added to the general pod information on the registration for the online version of Integrating Contextualized Workforce Skills in the ABE and ASE classroom. And it will start February the 3rd through March the 2nd. And she's added the registration information there. We would love to have your participation. This is somewhat a continuation of what this forum did to introduce you to what it's required to prepare our students for the 21st century workforce in the ABE and ASC classroom. And Catherine, is there anything else that you want to share about that? She's typing in some information for you and I am going to pass Catherine the mic. Hi, thanks. Hi, this thanks. is Catherine. Oh, I hear an echo myself. Um, so the class that I mentioned in the chat pod is starting soon. And we're still accepting registrations. If you yourself don't teach ABE or ASE, but you work with teachers who do, really please encourage them to sign up for this class. It offers uh, a lot uh, more time and therefore uh, depth to go into many of the points that Ashley uh, reviewed. Um, I wanted to make a couple other plugs if I could on related pieces. Um, Ashley also stressed the importance of teaching critical thinking skills as one of the 21st century skills and on Friday February 3rd we also have a short uh, 90 minute uh, workshop on that. It is um, also on CalPRO's event calendar, so registration is still open for that. Um, it, it's offered by Karen Ruiz, who's in Visalia Adult School, and she's done a wonderful job with this workshop showing uh, ABE and ASE and ESL instructors how they can help their students become better critical thinkers. Um, and we have one other resource I'll make a plug for that's related to what Karen was talking about. On CalPRO's website, there's something called the Virtual Workroom for um, 
workforce readiness. I'll send a link in a minute in the chat pod. But that gives you additional examples of materials you can use directly with your AVE or ASE students. There's and also um, suggestions for adapting it for use. So I'll um, I'll just see if anybody has any questions for me in the chat pod, and I can answer them there. Thanks for the time, Cherise and Ashley. Thank you very much, Catherine, and thank you again, Ashley, for your presentation today. If there are any questions that you have for Catherine, Barbara will leave the classroom open for a little bit of time since we're a little bit early today so that you can type those into the chat pod. And I want to, again, thank you each for participating this afternoon. Bye-bye.